after 2022 being a very mixed market with the first part of the year being a strong seller's market with multiple offers, bidding war still happening and really low inventory. The second half of the year, we saw interest rates move up to seven and a half percent. We saw inventory start to rise. We saw the number of offers come down briefly. So most people are wondering what's in store for the 2023 housing market. And while we're only in the third week of the year, we're already starting to see some clear signs that let us know what to expect for the rest of the year. First off, when we talk about pricing, the best thing to do is to look at what experts are forecasting. There are six big experts that give reliable forecasts. Realtor.com, the Home Price Expectation Survey, which is 100 economists that are surveyed quarterly. National Association of Realtors and their economist team. Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, the Mortgage Bankers Association, and Zellman Research, Ivy Zellman, was kind of the oracle that first predicted the 2006 market crash. Um, when you look at those spread out, Realtor.com is the most optimistic, forecasting 5.4% growth, while Zellman Research is the most pessimistic, projecting a 5.1% decline in home values. Everyone else is falling somewhere in the middle, and when you average them out, they're forecasting about 0.1% average price growth for the whole of 2023. So if you're a buyer and you'd like to save money and wait for the perfect house, you're probably not going to get priced out of the market. You can take your time purchasing. If you're a seller and you're looking to maximize your return on your sale price, really, if you sell sometime in January, February, or you wait till the end of the year, you're likely to still see the same value and bottom line on your closing statement. Mortgage rates are tied closely to the real estate market and home prices. And the best practice there is just like with prices to look at what the experts are projecting. We've got Freddie Mac, Fannie Mae, Mortgage Bankers Association, National Association of Realtors, all reliably forecasting prices quarterly throughout the year. And we're seeing 6.35% quarter one, 6.05 quarter two, 5.9 quarter three, and quarter four. 5.73%. Reality is today, if you're willing to pay one to two points, you can still access rates of the fives for the average borrower according to the index. So don't wait. If you would like to get a rate in the fives, reach out to us today. We can price out a loan and you might already be there. But generally speaking, you can expect to save about a half a percent on your interest rate if you're purchasing in the later part of the year. Keep in mind, as that rates come down, it might cause home prices to appreciate. It might push more buyers back into the market. So you may find yourself offsetting that savings and interest rate by paying a higher price for the house if you wait to purchase later in the year. As far as inventory levels, we've started to see inventory levels climb in November, December, and January. So buyers have more houses to choose from. Sellers have more houses to compete with. So when you're pricing your home, Expect to have to price it on the lower end of the range compared to where last year you might have been pricing ahead of the market a little bit. Um, generally speaking, though, we, we should see inventory levels remain relatively stable. We've been hovering around two months of supply for the last two years. We're likely to sit closer to four months of supply for most of this year. If you've been waiting for the market to crash and a better buyer opportunity, taking a look at this graph of foreclosure should be really interesting for you. You can see today, even with the amount of homes that went into foreclosure or forbearance during the COVID pandemic, with that forbearance ending and with the foreclosure moratorium ending, we're still seeing historically low numbers of foreclosures. These homeowners that may be behind are probably going to refinance into a longer loan or cash out refinance, take some of their equity out, catch up on other debts. They're not likely to be going into a foreclosure sale scenario with 88,000 foreclosures last reported. That's well below pre-pandemic levels, which hovered in the 300 to 400,000 range. So um, overall, moving forward to 2023, expect to see a return of more of a normal and balanced type of real estate market. If you have any questions on your home specific value, or if you're a buyer and you'd like to kind of plan strategically when you should purchase and how you're going to make that purchase happen, reach out to any of our agents or visit us on the web at www.donharkinsrealty.com. Thanks.